Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cervix YouTube channel. My name is Michael and today we want to talk about some misconceptions or myths of the new coronavirus, the COVID-19. And just from months back when this virus started affecting a few persons in Wuhan, China. Fast forward to today when close to 1 million persons have been affected by the virus globally and it keeps spreading and chances are we're going to have more and more persons become sick and thousands more die from the new coronavirus and one of the reasons i think a lot of people are still going to die from the covid 19 is because of the wide range of misconceptions about this virus is it a living thing is it dead is it airborne is the airborne can it be killed by garlic? So watch to the end of this video and we're going to look at the 10 main misconceptions about the COVID-19 and how you can get away from them all. And all of the information we're going to give in this video are coming straight from the World Health Organization. So we're not making anything up and yes, you can trust this video. So first, let's talk about medicines. There are all of these uh, misconceptions about all sorts of drugs including uh, chloroquine which has been claimed to be useful in the treatment of uh, the COVID-19 infection but the truth is there is no real scientific evidence to that effect. Yeah, so there's been some trials and there's been some speculations that it helps but nobody knows for sure if the chloroquine can kill the COVID-19 virus and that's simply because there's not been enough time to conduct conclusive research to make this claim. So, a lot of people are buying and using the chloroquine, especially here in Nigeria where we've had lots of cases of chloroquine poisoning and a lot of persons are going to die because of all of the drugs they have consumed and not because they actually have an infection. And why are you getting yourself treated if you don't have the symptoms? We gotta be wise, man, come on! Anyways, let's get back to the video. So, as at today, there has not been any known medication that has been confirmed for the treatment of the COVID-19. What happens most of the time is as people present symptoms, they are managed for the symptoms that they present. And because the symptoms are not always the exact same in every person, because there are some of the persons who have underlying illnesses, or some other factors that make them respond in specific ways and others not. So people are going to get treated based on the symptoms that they present. And that's basically how it works. And know this, there are some persons who have the COVID-19 and are symptomatic. That means they are not showing any symptoms in their body and they can move about as though they were healthy and go about their daily businesses, but they are actually actively transmitting this infection to every person with whom they make contact. That's scary, right? Yeah, and while that is so, there are some other persons who become sick and without getting very extensive treatment, recover on their own. And that is why in most countries of the world, the guidelines insist that you must be critically ill before you can be admitted to the hospital. Or else the hospitals will be full because the number of cases are rising at a very crazy rate so let's move on to the very second misconception which is that antibiotics are useful in the fight against the covid 19 now antibiotics are useful in fighting against bacteria but are most times not useful in the fight against a virus and as you know the covid 19 it's a virus so it doesn't matter how much antibiotics you take, you probably be doing yourself a lot more harm. So just in case you have a stash of antibiotics somewhere in your home, you don't need to take those except they have been prescribed by a doctor or health professional. But most times that wouldn't be for treatment of the COVID-19. So please be guided. Do not self-medicate. So the third misconception is the belief that if someone took the vaccine against pneumonia that they would be immune from the COVID-19. Well. While this might seem reasonable because both are respiratory infections, know this, the pneumonia that we know is caused by a bacteria, not by a virus. So they are two different organisms and operate in two very different ways. So a vaccine against pneumonia would be totally useless if you were fighting the COVID-19 and people would be advised not to do that. So if you are at risk of having a pneumonia or you're going to get a vaccine, that's fine. Do that for the pneumonia, not for 
the COVID-19. So moving on, number four, uh, genetics. If I was making this video some months back before we recorded our first indigenous death here in Africa, people would have said, oh, bro, you don't know what you're saying, but you know, Africans have died from the COVID-19. So the conception that Africans cannot be killed by the COVID-19 is totally wrong. We're fortunate the infections did not start here in Africa. So at least it won't get named the African COVID-19, except if a new strain comes up in Africa and is named the COVID-20. But until that happens, this has not come from around here. But that doesn't mean we're immune from it. It affects us and it kills black people everywhere in the world. So please take care of yourself and do not assume that you are a superhero because, hey, my friends, you are not immune. Number five, climate. There's been this misconception about uh, whether climate affects the COVID-19 and some have said that the, the tropical heat destroys the virus and some have said that the temperate colds destroy the virus and some have said, okay, it's more effective or more efficient or it works, it's more infectious in these climes, but in these climes, we don't have any scientific basis for that. But as we know now, the COVID-19 can affect people in all continents of the world and and can survive in all continents of the world so that assumption that if someone who was infected returned to africa then the sun would uh, kill the virus yeah that's that's not true we know that female anopheles mosquitoes are able to transmit malaria in in some african countries or probably all african countries but uh, that is not true for the covid 19. number seven and that's a very important one let's talk about alcohol so yeah you know, when scientists talked about uh, hand sanitizers with high alcoholic content being able to stop the virus, you know, get it deactivated. So a lot of persons had a misconception that if you drank or consumed a lot of alcohol, then all of the COVID-19 in your bloodstream would die. That is totally false. So alcohol is useless in the fight against the COVID-19 after you've consumed it. It's better when you just get that hand sanitizer and just flash it on just to keep your hands safe, you know, at the time being. But uh, if you, for any reason, imagine that uh, you have a lot of alcohol, then you're going to be immune from the virus, then that is absolutely false and that is not true and there is no basis for that and you should not do that. You know, what a lot of alcohol consumption could do for you is lower your immune system and make you very vulnerable so that when the infection does come, you would not survive it. Number eight, let's talk about age. So at an initial time, people thought that younger persons were not susceptible to dying from the COVID-19 because the COVID-19 killed mostly old people and that's probably because most of them had pre-existing conditions and uh, that made it very difficult for them to survive the COVID-19 infection. But in more recent times, we have seen young people in their 20s and their 30s uh, contract this virus and die from it. So, yes, we know that if your immune system is compromised and if you have underlying health conditions, it doesn't matter how old you are, chances are you could die from the COVID-19. So, young people, stop being careless. Stop running around the streets hoping that... Uh, you could catch the virus and you'll be safe from it because really, you will not be. And when you catch that, no one can tell what the outcome is going to be. So better stay safe, right? Stay off the streets, man. Everybody self-isolate and stay off more than necessary contacts because this stuff is like a predator that is preying on all of us. It doesn't matter if you're young or old or whatever. It gets to you, you're gone. Number eight, home remedies. So yeah, we've had yeah some of the stories again about all of those uh, home remedies, you know, garlic, uh, ginger, ginseng, or whatever. And we believe that, uh, people believe that they can prepare these herbs or whatever and then they take them and it keeps them immune from the virus. Um, again, that is not true. While a lot of these home remedies are very healthy and good for consumption, there is very little evidence that they can support the fight against the COVID-19 or even destroy uh, the virus. So it's, it's okay to take your home remedies as long as you're not exposing yourself to unnecessary risks because you're going to get infected even if you ate a trail load of garlic. And number 10, 
There are some technologies we found very useful in disinfecting environments in uh, very recent times such as the ultraviolet light and this has been used in many hospitals for sanitizing the environment but you see while ultraviolet light is pretty good and can help you get rid of some microbes it is actually very useless against the COVID-19 especially if you already have the infection Notice this when you have an infection the microorganism is inside of your body and exposing your skin to ultraviolet lights can actually cause uh, skin irritation or damage your skin so that is something you might want to stay totally away from and not get yourself exposed especially if you have uh, tested a uh, positive and just like the ultraviolet lights we have head of uh, thermal scanners and please uh, thermal scanners are not useful in detecting the COVID-19 infection all it does is detect who is having a fever and they are, they are not quite the same so a person could have a fever but not from the COVID-19 so if this device was used in in some airports or in some public places for screening it only helps them identify people who might need urgent testing to confirm if they have the virus or not but it does not categorically state that a person has the COVID-19 virus or not and here's a final one for you i know i said we're going to give 10 but we'll give them an 11th one just for all of you are going through the video to this point and that would be uh constant nose rinsing using normal saline all of these beautiful theories of how the disease progresses starting from uh, your throat and how it forms and eventually makes it down to your lungs and all of that but yeah rinsing your nose with uh, saline would not change anything and that is totally not acceptable like it, it, there is no real benefits to doing this so our advice would be listen to the authorities uh, self-isolate avoid unnecessary contacts and stay safe and stay home and then maybe sometime in the nearest future all of us will come out real healthy and real fine from uh, all of these and then we can uh, talk about other things that are pretty more uh, relevant to us so but right now all the tasks we need to do is avoid uh, panicking avoid all of those misconceptions uh, stay safe and please try hard to educate all of the people with whom you communicate and let them know that all of these misconceptions are not going to make the situation better rather they're going to make things a lot worse than they already are and you don't want to have that and if it's your first time on this channel, click on the subscribe button and click on the like. Uh, share some of your thoughts about the COVID-19 misconceptions. Do you have any misconceptions of your own that we have not talked about in this video? Let's hear them in the comment section. And I'll be looking forward to responding to all of your comments. So if you've seen this video to this point, thank you very much.